he was her own. In the last couple of years, my mommy's siblings, and my siblings would have shared stories of my mother, which apparently showed a different side of the Sony they grew up with. The Sony they grew up with was fun, loving, and mostly carefree. So hearing us talk about the lit and punishment meted out to us was an image they tried and failed to picture. My mother was a sister to Patsy Greenaway, who resides in New York, but could not be here with us physically. But trust me, she's here by all means possible. Thank God for technology. Mummy had two more siblings, Brenda John Smith and the late Genevieve Harry. I know you hate on there, early. In my mother's younger days, she was slim in size and had a walk that earned her the nickname Stella Dukes. Mummy would often remind me that I look good, but never as half as good as she did. She would often say to me, you're going to regret those boy legs later in life. But when we had a heart of gold, I was selfless when it came to giving. Mummy was the type of person, if she saw someone in need, you can guarantee that she would assist, even if it meant her giving her last and no one would ever know. Mummy was a gem and the life to any room she entered and boy, was she a storyteller. When it came to her fond memories, some of it she will assure along the way. I remember on the 28th of October 2019, while visiting my mom at the hospital in Washington, bed four. Boy, was this a day to remember. It was a day my mommy never let me live down. During that particular visit, I was stressed. I just let my mommy try to play it off. Like nothing was wrong. That did not go. Uh, that did not go well. Cause I collapsed at the feet of my her bed. When it came around, my mommy was crying. No, she wasn't. She was bawling. But believe me when I say, when she found out I was good, my mother painted the story so colorful. Often having people laugh at me, but never mentioning how she was bawling or how helpless she felt. And when they remind her of how she was bawling, she would often say she just did not want me to die at the feet of her bed. Remembering conversations with her, my sister Sonia, it brings a smile, laugh, or sometimes tears. In one of our conversations, we talked about growing up as children and a little about our adult lives. One of the stories she told me was about the time when she and her best friend Maxine just decided out of the blue to take a one-day trip to Trinidad before mentioning it to anyone. They went their merry way, but fate would have it that they got stuck in Trinidad. And there you go. They had no other option than to let the cat out of the bag. This was a spontaneous Sonia I knew. Her friend Sandra tells stories of them going on drives and getting lost. When such occurred, Sonia's response was never one of panic or worry, but simply, we will just follow bus stops leading into town. Sandra recalls one other drive where they went to the airport and joined the line of departing passengers, pretending that they too were traveling while taking pictures and making sure that luggage could be seen in those pictures that they shared at a later date. Such are these fun, fun memories that will stay with us. Sonia was a dedicated and hard worker, albeit having some physical challenges. She worked at the St. Albans Primary School for many years. One of her former co-workers shared how committed she was to her work. She said that she has never seen someone sweep a whole area sitting down, and yet it was still properly done with no complaints from anyone. Sonia sat and sweat because her knees were often painful. So she worked her way around it to overcome the challenge. Sonia was also known for her no-nonsense attitude to life. No matter how close you were to her, if she felt you were doing or saying something that was wrong, she would let you know in no uncertain terms and sometimes with very colorful language. Sonia fought, fought a long battle with her health challenges which she bore with grace and dignity. At times you could see that she was experiencing pain, but her response was always, I good. She fought a good fight, always grateful for her for having yet another day. On the morning of February 20th, 2021, 
She didn't have any fight to give, so she went to join her mom and sister. We'll surely miss her, but her memories will live on within our hearts. On behalf of the family, I take this opportunity to say thanks to the doctors and staff of AKU and the PD unit of the QEH. Special mention of nurses Sonia and Erica for your beyond the call of duty, concern, and genuine care is greatly appreciated. As I close, I share this poem from her to us. Miss, Miss me, but let me go. I've come to the end of the road, and the sun has set for me. I want no rights in a gloom-filled room. Why cry for our soul set free? Miss me a little, but not for long, and not with your head hung low. Remember our good times and the love we shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this journey is one we all must take, and each must go alone. It's all part of the master's plan, a step on the road to home. When you feel lonely and sick at heart, turn to the God we know and bury your sorrows in doing good deeds. Miss me, then let me go. My dear sister, rest in peace. Sister dear, remembering you will be easy. <sighs> we do it every day. But, but losing, losing you has taken, taken part of us away. away. Rest in peace. The opening hymn, Will Your Anchor Hold?
just a reminder to us that the masks remain throughout the service. As this is being streamed, we would have to continue to follow protocols. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant, Sonia Marita, and we pray that, having opened to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please sit for the first reading. Romans chapter 8, verse 18 to 25. Present suffering and future glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we are saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Here ends the reading. We stand to sing the Psalm 23 Crimean version.
be said for the second reading. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be there where I am. You know to do the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Here ends the reading. The hymn before the address, It Is Well With My Soul.
I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Words from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. The book of Lamentations is actually um, a, a part of the book of Jeremiah. It's kind of a follow-up to the book of Jeremiah. And it tells of the lament or the sorrow that the people of Jerusalem went through after their city had been sieged by a king and basically decimated it was destroyed so imagine if somebody came in and destroyed Bridgetown or destroyed Warrens or destroyed something how we would feel or even how we feel now in the midst of this pandemic when it seems as though our lives have been decimated our lives have been changed so much that it's, it's almost difficult to fathom but what the writer does to console the people as they mourn the passing of what was of a life that they knew, something that they were comfortable with, he reminds them that God's love does not cease and that God's compassion is constant and that every morning God's love and compassion are renewed. And these are words I want to share with us this morning as we reflect on the life of our sister as we can compare her loss to the loss of Jerusalem and we can also compare her loss to the, lo the loss of normal life, the life, of, the life that we were used to, what we considered normalcy, where before we probably would have had a packed church and people would be outside standing up and everything would be fine and we would, might have had solos and all those other things that we had gotten used to. But when things change in life, sometimes we have to look for constants. And uh, sometimes we try to identify what are the constants in our lives. And uh, the constants in our lives would be sometimes like very close friends. Sometimes it would be family. Sometimes it would be workmates. Sometimes it would be church family or, or some group of people or something that we always keep in our lives as a constant that kind of holds us together. But what the writer of Lamentations was trying to help the people of Jerusalem to understand was that even though these constants might disappear, which could easily happen, you could easily lose your job, you could easily fall out with somebody, you could easily not get along with a family member that you were getting along with, but he's reminding them that God's love is constant. So that even in the midst of very difficult times, and it must have been a very difficult time for them as it was, as it is for us, as it is for you today, that there is one thing that they can be sure of, that the love of God does not change. I know that sometimes it's hard for us to understand how God could love us and then still difficult things happen in life. But let's look back to when we were children and let's think about our parents or whoever it was that raised us. And even though, as we, as we heard in the eulogy, even though there was love, sometimes there was a difficult patch. Well, there were lashes. And that happens sometimes in life. Some, somebody that you love dearly, it doesn't mean that you will shield them from all the things that you could in life. You will try to protect them but it doesn't mean that you will always shield them because sometimes you have to go through things in order to learn something. So you don't not let your child fall down or you don't not let your child get something wrong in school or you don't not let your child do something wrong and learn from it. That is how you teach people and that is how people learn to grow. So sometimes difficult things will happen in life. It always happens to everybody at some point in their life. None of us can escape it. You know? But... There is this one constant that we have, and that is that God's love is there. And whether we believe it or we accept it or we know it or not, that doesn't change anything. 
If somebody tells you that there is wind and, and you don't believe it, that doesn't change the fact that there is wind. So whether we believe that there is the love of God or we don't, or we don't believe it in the way that a particular church might teach it or a particular religion might teach it, that doesn't mean that God's love doesn't exist. And so that is, that is what is available to us this morning and, and throughout our lives and to everybody without question. No negotiation. Absolutely no negotiation. You know, if you go somewhere to buy something, you might say, well, you could take off a little something here because this here is so a little older or, you know, it's the last one. You don't have to negotiate with God. God's love is going to be there all the time, whether or not. And that is something that is really interesting and really exciting because you can go to God however, wherever. There is this hymn that um, older people used to sing, just as I am. Just as I am, I come. You know? It's like when you show up at a friend's house, they don't go, why you come at me looking so well? You can't really go out in a body house now, so I don't want y'all going to body house. But when you used to be able to go to people's house, and you show up at a friend's house for something, they're going to go, so when you come at me looking so rough, dry, why you, why you, they're just happy to see you. That is what God is like. God is just so happy to share with you and share, your pres share God's presence with you and share your presence with God. That it doesn't matter who you are or how you are or what you are or how you think. That's what God offers. And that's the love that God offers to you this morning as, as you celebrate Sonia's life. But as I know, it must be really difficult for you as you also mourn her passing. That this love of God is available to all of us. And it's available in two ways. We can connect with God personally. But another really easy way to connect with God is connecting with each other. And sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we think that we can only connect with God this way, through church. But one of the really cool ways of, of connecting with God as, as well is connecting with each other. And, and Jesus always spoke about the fact that you were to love God and you were to love each other. But sometimes you focus on one and not the other. So we're either really good at loving God and not loving each other, or we're really good at loving each other, but we don't really check for God. And God is, Jesus is saying that both are important. It's not either or, it's both and. And the two of them work really well together. But this love that God offers to us is available to us directly as we, can, as we connect with God. But it is also available to us as we work with God through working with each other. And Christianity has a really interesting way of um, portraying that there is this cross. And it is representative, of course, of the crucifixion of Jesus. But also what, what we teach is that the vertical arm is actually connecting us to God and the horizontal arm connects us to each other so that we always remember that we have to check for God and we also remember that we have to check for each other and both are equally important. The writer tells us that every morning God's love and God's compassion are renewed. I guess we know what every morning means. That ain't hard to understand. Every morning means, every morning means, every single morning. Like when we woke up and we realized that we had COVID cases in Barbados, that didn't change God's love or God's compassion. When we woke up and we realized that Sonia was no longer going to be with us physically, that did not change God's love and God's compassion. But sometimes it's really hard to pay attention to that when you're in so much pain. You just block everything out. But I don't want you to block God out in the midst of your pain. I, as your heart is broken now, I want you to let God into your heart and just let God soothe you, love you, hold you, console you, support you, and carry you through this. But just remember that God will hear and God will support and God will assist. Because that's how God is. If it is that God offers steadfast love, constant love, it means that it is not now and then, it is not up and down, it is not here or there, it is all the time. And it is not in, in varying degrees. It is always at a particular level 
all the time, no matter what happens. You know, if you hold your breath for as long as you can hold your breath, and then you start to breathe again, you get air, right? That's the same thing with God. If you decide, I'm done with this, I ain't interested, and then you decide you're interested again, there God is. So if you, if you want to see, if you want to use an analogy, use the analogy of God and, and the breath, God and ear. When you hold your breath and you stop, it doesn't mean that nobody else out there can't breathe because you're not breathing. It doesn't mean that the ear has stopped. So when you decide, when you are asking for God's help, when you're asking for God's love, God's support, God's guidance in the midst of all this, God is going to be there. I can't tell you how God is going to respond because different people have different experiences. But just know that in some way, somehow, God is going to hold you up. God is going to support you through this. God is going to carry you through this. And this experience, it is my hope and my prayer for you will be a stepping stone towards who God intends you to be. Let it not be a situation where you spend your entire life being angry and upset, but let it be an opportunity for you to give God thanks for the life of Sonia, for the examples, for, your for her time with you and your time with her, and uh, use it as an opportunity to celebrate and honor her memory every single day of your life. As God renews you with love and compassion, renew yourself with God's love, God's compassion, and cherished memories of your dear friend, mother, aunt, and sister, our beloved Sonia Marita. May she rest in peace. Amen. I invite you know to stand and to say with me the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The next hymn is we sing Sonia's favorite hymn, Face to Face with Christ my Savior.
Let us pray. We pray for those who mourn, especially those who mourn for our sister Sonia Marita. We commemorate the departed, those known and loved by us. Especially today, we remember our sister Sonia. Let us pray with confidence to God, our Creator, who raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Grant, Lord, that your servant may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be close to those who mourn. Increase their faith in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we be strengthened in our faith, live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your Son, and be ready when you call us to the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Show your mercy to the dying. Strengthen them with hope and fill them with the peace and joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. We commend all people to your unfailing love, that in them your will may be fulfilled. And we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Sonia Marita, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us grace, we pray, to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the maker and creator of humankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us commend our sister Sonia Marita to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Deliver your servant Sonia, O Sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set her free from every bond, that she may share with your saints in the eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands. O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Sonia. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Just before our closing hymn, we will have the committal as the body of our sister will be cremated this afternoon. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we command it to Almighty God, our sister Sonia Marita, and we commit her body to be consumed by fire. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness Give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor. And when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this our sister Sonia Marita and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon her. May she and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen.
The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious unto her. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon her and give her peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, when the roll is called up yonder.